When that phone call came in, Alan and I were both sitting in the car. There's just nothing like that. I know many people have been given this message. And it's, it's some of the hardest words that you have to hear. It turns your life upside down and causes, initially it causes great fear. And it just turns you inside out and, and, and suddenly you're scrambling, thinking, oh, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? And this is where I'm so grateful for my relationship with God. Of course, after that initial shock, that's where I went. I went to God. It's like, oh, wow. This is so much bigger than we are. Prior to that, we had lived self-sufficient lives. We could do it on our own. But now this was bigger than we were. This wasn't something we could work our way out of. And this was real, and it was big, and we knew we were going to need some help. And we turned to God. As a believer in, in, in God and in Christ, you tend to also want to say, Why me, Lord? You know, thinking that God's got the whole world in His hands, right? So why would you put cancer on me? Well, we want to tell you that that's not the case. Uh, John 10.10 10 says that Satan came to kill, steal, and destroy, and Christ came to give us life and life abundant. So if I were to put cancer in a category, would I put it in the kill, steal, and destroy category, or would I put it in the abundant life category? So for us, it was easy for us to move out of that why me, Lord, and into understanding that, yes, Satan is very alive and real and forceful, and so this was not an act of God, but Satan. But we also knew that God can take things that Satan do, does and turn them for good. Strength. Where do you find the strength to battle such a thing as cancer? For Alan and I, we found that strength in God. His word says, be still and know that I am God. And as hard as it is when your mind is spinning, the only place you're going to go to find strength is in God. And by resting in His presence, it allows you to let go of the angst and, and the craziness that is all built up within you, all that tension. I mean, it's toxic. And by resting in His presence, you can take your spirit and your soul to a place of peace. And then from there, inwardly, your body responds. For me, I had to lean in on God. I had to press in heavy and hard. He is my source of strength. And because of that, because I was able to refuel and rejuvenate and, and pour out, the kids got through this fairly well. As a caregiver that's a parent, this is really important. Your kids are going to mimic your response to this situation. So if you, you, you have choices here, if you choose to lose it and just get all panicky about it, the kids will do the same. Or you can choose to be strong and to bring in peace and the kids will, will feed off of that as well. Know that God is first, your patient is second, the children are third, and your job is fourth. And keep that priority in mind because know that your strength is going to come from God and that strength that you gain from God, you can share with the patient, the children, and the job. 
So if you get disconnected from God, you're going to lose your source of strength. So rely heavily on Him at this point. I had learned about the power that I had in Christ months before Alan was diagnosed. And it's funny because I just, I went to a healing seminar, not even knowing it was a healing seminar. And uh, I just wanted to learn more about this teacher. Well, my goodness, nine months later, Alan was diagnosed with cancer. And all that information that I learned came rolling in. And that he taught us how God wants us well. And he, it is his intention that we be well. However, Satan is so strong in this world that he, he affects all of us. No matter how strong the Christian might be, he is still having an impact on us. So I learned, number one, that healing was a possibility, that God does still heal, which is something that I had been taught otherwise. Um, so I learned that healing was still a possibility. And I also learned that healing was God's desire for us. That Christ not only went to the cross for us to be saved, to forgive us for our sins, and to spend life eternally with God, He also went to the cross to give us health. He died for our sins. By His stripes, we are healed. Jesus didn't give anyone any diseases. He healed them. And so Alan and I were able to find comfort in knowing that we could come to Jesus. He is on our side. We don't realize how important our words are. And complaining is one of the areas that is completely non-productive and, and actually rather destructive. Alan learned through chemo that, uh, that once he began complaining, the effects of chemo were ramped up. And we were reminded by our friend to stop complaining that the Israelites never did get to see the Promised Land simply because all they did was complain. So we put a halt to that. There was no more complaining. Once, once we realized the importance of our spoken words and the toxic effect that complaining had on us, we removed it and ushered in words of life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And, 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 and when you have a person trying to survive something as, as serious as cancer, the words that you speak can bring life or they can bring death. You can create an environment with your words of life or you can create that environment of death. So you choose your words wisely. Come to God and ask Him, what are the words that I should say? Be thankful. Thank Him for your blessings. Uh, know that your words have an, an impact on the environment that surrounds you. It has an impact on the patient's heart and mind. So when these words are negative, it just drives up a toxic situation. Whereas with positive words, it brings more peace and more of a spiritual alignment to that person. It, it helps them come out of a period, place of angst and into a place of peace. Wellness is never going to come from a place of anxiousness. It's, 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 going, it's only going to come from a place of peace. This might sound a little strange, but Alan and I found out that we needed to choose our visitors carefully. Um, we have so many well-wishers that would come by and would want to sit down and have a chat and talk about how, uh, you know, how sad it is that Alan has cancer. and. They meant well, 
but they didn't understand that their words were not in effect supportive. It was almost like we were having to minister to them versus them ministering to us. And which is fine. We don't mind ministering. But um, the words that they may speak, not even realizing what they were saying, we found to be kind of um, destructive. So we... And they, and they didn't mean that. So it, 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 at some point we did decide, you know what, we, we're just going to have to be careful who we let into this house and, um, and, and, you know, whatever they bring in with them because we just can't afford at this point to, enter, to fight any more battles than we're already fighting. The thing is, is that the words that the doctors give you are what they see in the natural. That's, that's what they've been taught, that's what they've learned, that's what they've experienced. But the thing is, is that God's Word trumps that. So when a doctor gives you a, a bad diagnosis, or, or is telling, you know, feeling your ears and your head about the effects of this chemotherapy. It's, it's negative words that are coming in. Yes, it's in the natural, it's truth, but it, it, it's a negative. And so by turning that over to God and coming to Him, knowing that He trumps everything that's in the natural, it helps you to get beyond those words that were spoken to you by a doctor and, and look to the work of God to overcome whatever that situation might be. It's not a put your head in the sand and ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. That's not it at all. It's a matter of knowing your position in Christ that... You can battle this on a supernatural level, a, a level that's different from what the doctors experience. With Alan, he was told, you know, that this interference is going to be awful. And, that, you know, 60%, I think, don't even finish out the first month. And so you tend to set your mind to go into it with that kind of expectation. However, since we had been through this journey with God and, and have been learning about the power that we have in Christ, we decided to focus on God and what His Word said versus the natural effects of chemo and the words that the doctor gave us. So it actually was very effective. Jesus has given us authority. Us as believers that have accepted Him have certain authority that He has given us. We are one with Christ. And as being one with Christ, we are placed above the dominion of all of evil. And so in the name of Christ, we can command things to happen. So don't feel odd by speaking to the disease and saying, come out, be healed in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus has given that to us. We have that authority. And we did that many times with Alan, over and over. Your patient is going to have hard times, very hard times. So when he comes to you with complaining and frustration and anguish and tears, the strength, you will have the strength to help lift him out of that place through God. Otherwise, you'll be leaning on yourself and you're not going to maintain, you're not going to be able to have that kind of strength. Patients sometimes uh, strike out at the person who loves them the most and cause them the most grief. And, and you know, Alan would do this occasionally. And when he would, I chose to just blow it off. I just let it, like water on a duck, I just let it roll off and I didn't let it set. I just moved forward in peace. 
and sometimes it was the piece was external and, and maybe internal. I was a little rattled, but um, I was able still to carry peace to 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 diffuse that moment in time. He leaned on me for that. He counted on me to be his rock, and there's no way I could have done that without God. During that time, man, my my wife was so much by my side. She was just there with me, and she was the support. She had the faith and the trust that this was going to be okay, and she, and I don't know what that was at the time. I know it was her belief in God and that God's got this, but her strength came through, and as a caretaker or caregiver for me during that time, that was an integral part of me having the confidence that this is going to be okay. Jesus said he came to give us life and life abundant. And so when, when you look at his sacrifice on the cross, you can come to know that it's not just for saving you. It's not just for washing away your sins. It's for you to live the abundant life here, now, today. And we hung our hats on that.